Thank you very much. Um, so just very, very quickly, because I've only got half an hour, um, and we're going to try possibly and do the risky live demo at the end. We shall see. Um, so I'm James. I'm an ex-teacher. I gave a talk earlier on about my experiences with PyCon. And um, I'm going to talk about the Raspberry Pi weather station. I've, I've now left teaching and I work for the Raspberry Pi Foundation, which is the charity side of the organization, which Carrie Ann mentioned in her keynote this morning. So um, before I get onto the weather station, um, one of the things that we're really passionate about, and, and I'm, I'm passionate about particularly, is that when we're working with students, that projects they work with should have purpose. And we, I talked about this this morning in my talk. Purpose is really important. If the examples that we work, uh, that we give kids to work with, are, are trite and engineered, then they don't see the purpose. They don't see the value in them. Okay, so projects with purpose are really important. Um, here are three projects that we've got going on. I've not mentioned Astro Pi here, although we did loosely connect it with the space thing. Um, Astro Pi is a, an event we're, that's going on in later in um, the year. We're sending some Raspberry Pis to space. Kids are coding. Um, Python code to work on those Raspberry Pis, so we're going to have code being run in space from UK kids. The reason that picture's there, though, is this picture um, the Raspberry Pi team took last week with a Raspberry Pi on a helium balloon um, at, I don't know, uh, I'm not sure what altitude this was at. It, it reached an altitude of about 32, uh, 32 kilometers. Um, this picture is actually our my, one of my favorite ones, and it's actually uh, picture 314, which is quite apt. Um, so we're doing this with some kids as well and teachers and, and showing kids how we can use programming, science, engineering, technology to do, do cool stuff. This middle picture, this is the, the weather station kit, which I'm going to talk about in a second. And over here, for some reason, the picture's got cropped. You can just about see it here. Um, we've got a little greenhouse next to a plant. Ben, who did a talk earlier on, spoke briefly about this. This is a little greenhouse project that allows kids to write code to monitor their house plants and flash little LEDs so the house kind of reflects the health of the plant. So projects with purpose, really important. Um, when I was just leaving teaching, I was given one of the prototype boards, um, which looked quite different to this. It was a lot bigger, um, and it's been re-engineered slightly. And we, there were these, these boards were given to schools, um, we coded them, we got them set up with the kids, we talked about how weather data is collected, and we installed one in our school. So the, the very last day, one of the last things I did was I was getting the caretaker drilling holes in the wall, feeding cables out, so I could leave this weather station in place. Um, so let's just have a quick look around the hardware and see what we've got here. Um, so this is what we'd call a, a Raspberry Pi hat. Um, it sits on top of the Raspberry Pi. It connects with the mounting holes, uh, and it connects where we've got the GPIO header that sits on top of the pins. I've got one in the case if anyone wants to have a closer look later on. Um, and then those two parts snap off and form two separate parts of the weather station. You've got the main board, which I've got holding here, in this case, and this is going to be in a watertight case. And then you've also got the smaller case, which contains an air quality sensor. So on this one, you remove all the rubber bungs, that one's open to the air, so that the air can circulate. And you separate those two out, and they communicate over I squared C. So they're the main parts of the weather station. Um, but we connect up to the weather station with a series of sensors. So we've got, and this is all just standard kit. You know, we was a store in the UK called Maplin. This is what, uh, where, you know, the same kind of kit they stock in there. So we've got a simple uh, rain gauge, which operates with a little seesaw. That little seesaw triggers a little tiny little digital switch, and it just counts the number of tips. Okay? So we've got the rain gauge, so we can uh, detect the amount of rainfall. We've got... These two sensors, so this one is an anemometer, so uh, we can measure wind speed, and this one is a weather vane, so we can measure wind direction, okay? And these just connect via a very simple cable. No, I don't need my password, thank you. Okay, and um, so we've got all these different sensors. We've also got, on the air quality sensor, we've got a ground temperature probe that we can um, bury in the ground so we can measure the temperature uh, of the soil. Um, and we've got a whole load of sensors. We've all, uh, so we've also got um, to, because so, so part of this is it's going to be doing data logging, so we've also got uh, a backup battery on there for the real-time clock. So this board sits on the Raspberry Pi, and you deploy it somewhere, and it sits there, and it does data logging. Okay? Now, you can, um, when, you get, when, when, when these are out there and available, you can just follow a guide, set it up, deploy it, and have it just logging data. And that's, that's, that's a great big tick. You know, you've got a, a lovely weather station set up. Kids can interrogate data. 
But what's even better is if you can show the kids how it works. So I'll come back to the project, actually. Let's talk about resources. So what we're doing is we're building up a selection of resources which are going to show kids how to go through building their own weather station from scratch. Um, so the first one, reading digital sensors. That's fairly straightforward. If you've got a rain gauge and that's tipping, you can detect the number of pulses that that sends down that wire. Okay, it's a simple tick. If you know how much water is in each bucket that causes it to tip, you can then work out how much water has flown through there. So there's a simple bit of maths in there to work that out. The anemometer is similar. Inside the anemometer, there's a little magnet, and as the anemometer spins round, that magnet creates a little tick. Okay? And then you have to do some maths, so we, we're in, 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 sort of embedding some maths into those um, schemes of work, where the students have to work out the circumference ascribed by the um, anemometer. They can use that to work out the distance travelled in a certain amount of time, so they can work out the wind speed. They even, because the guy that sort of has written the, the, some of the stuff for this is very thorough, you even, I think, adjust for what's called anemometer factor, the energy lost by the wind pushing the, um, the, 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 uh, the anemometer. Um, we've got a series of other schemes of work that we're sort of in the pipeline as well. So the analog data bit is a bit harder, but we're hoping to get the kids um, actually reading some of the analog sensors as well. Presenting live data, and if the live demo works later on, we've got a really simple Pi game GUI that we just knocked up for a demonstration. Um, but actually so that you can see what those sensors are reading right now. Um, and, then, and then talking about how to do data logging. Okay, so we've now got our sensors collecting all this information. How are we going to log that? Are we going to use text files? Well, there's lots of inherent issues with that. Are we going to use, um, you know, lots of other things? Oh, you know, and ultimately, we'll get around to the idea that we use a database. We'll show them how to do that. We'll show them how to build a, a web sort of interface so they can see graphing of, of this data. And then... The big data, I'll come, I'm going to jump around a little bit on this. Um, the big data bit is that we're going to be collecting data from all around the globe, and that data is going to be available to schools. So not only can they access the data from their local weather station, but they can access the data from weather stations all around the globe, collected by school children like them, bringing them into a, a truly global project. So how are we going to do this? So the project is, is bigger than the hardware. It's bigger than the resources. It's a huge project. So... We're going to produce a 1,000 of these kits. And already, like, we're, we're totally oversubscribed. You know, loads of schools have signed up. But they're going to be going to schools, the first 1,000. And they're going globally. And that's partnered with Oracle. And Oracle are involved in um, other aspects later on as well. So we're going to produce these resources, um, which we're going to share with, people, with, with, with schools so that they can use them. And the local school is going to log their data in a MySQL database, which is then going to be periodically uploaded to a central Oracle database, which is going to be able to be accessible to all the schools participating, and I think possibly beyond. Um, so I've been involved. My, my role in this, apart from delivering it in school, my role has been mainly on the resources. So I'm just going to give you a little flavor of the um, resources. So this is, if you've not been to Raspberry Pi, um, this is our, um, what our resources look like. Um, this is not yet on the public site, but uh, will be shortly. So we've got a little overview here of the resource. It tells you what you will need. Now, I very quickly... <laughs> my internet connection's gone. Great. Um, so I'll just talk about them. So that's, that's the, sort of the format. I very quickly realised, bringing this into school, that I had one weather station and a class of 20 kids. And getting them all to engage with this one weather station was going to be difficult. So there's some problems there. Um, now, the first thing that you can really easily do for the first scheme of work in here, um, if my internet connection was to come back, I'd better go into the what you need. And you can simulate an anemometer. You don't need an anemometer. You don't even need all this fancy board. The fancy board does lots of other cool stuff later on, and you will need it for th those bits. But for the an anemometer, all that is, as it's spinning around, is a switch. So you could use a pair of wires, just two wires, and just tap them together or a button hooked up to the pie, and the kids can then... We had a competition to see how fast they could simulate wind, which was quite an odd sight of kids just, like, mashing buttons, trying to like, get the fastest wind speed. Who can make it rain faster? Yeah! And then, and then we, like, once their code was working, they could come up and bring their pie, hook it up to the weather station, test it, and then we had water on the teacher's desk, and, and that, was, that was dangerous. But we, you know, we tested it, we did some calibration. So there's loads of cool maths and science and, and, and programming involved in this. Um, so that's kind of um, all I really wanted to talk about about the weather station kit itself. 
So what I think I'm going to do now is I'm going to try and do a live demo, which um, could be interesting. So we'll, we shall see. So um, what I'm going to do as well, maybe, if it's OK, is I might, at this stage, whilst I'm doing some setting up, open the floor to any questions that you might have, if that's OK. And then I can be answering those whilst I'm also setting up. So I'm going to give that a go. Is that all right? Cool. So do we have any questions at all about the weather station? Or am I just going to be setting up in silence? All right, we've got some questions. Awesome, thank you. Right. I, I guess one of the obvious questions is, is what is your ETA for so much of this additional kit? Right, so um, the, the, the thousand boards that we're producing, they are, um, they are almost produced, I think, as far as I'm aware. Um, so the, the project currently, I'm involved in the resource generation um, side of the project. That's my, my, my primary focus. Um, but I'm also working on, I'm just going to unplug that. Um, but I'm also working more generally with the project. And I'm aware of the conversations now. I think our aim is to get these into schools um, sort of early to late autumn this year. Um, but we're still waiting to have some of these resources written and working. Um, and then beyond that, I believe, and I, again, this isn't sort of in concrete, but I believe the idea is that these boards will eventually go on sale so that other people can purchase them, have those in their school. And just before I left, the guy who designed the hardware was saying that he's had some interest from some third parties. Um, some people, there's a, a, a group called Nature Bites um, who do like little bird boxes with cameras and things. And what they want to do is they want to integrate the weather station into their product so that as well as collecting data about the wildlife, they're also collecting data um, about the weather and the conditions and the climate at the same time. So you've got that sort of map of what's happening with the wildlife and what's going on in their local environment. Does that answer the question in terms of time scales roughly or... Yeah, we're, we're sort of r roughly, I think, I think six months would be a fair estimate. At the moment, um, Astro Pi, which I mentioned at the beginning, um, which is our space project, that's taking a, a huge amount of our time, and we've got a very fixed deadline, which is uh, um, a, a launch, a rocket launch, which we, which we have to kind of fit in with. You know, they're not going to wait for us. We asked, um, but ESA, um, they're, they're not overly flexible on, on moving the launch of their Soyuz rocket for a two-kilogram two payload. So, um, so yeah, it's, we, we're kind of we're a small team. So the team that we've that we've got with us today, myself, Carrie Ann, Ben, that's pretty. Uh, that's maybe half the team. Yeah, that, that's it. Um, and we're the ones writing the resources. We're out doing conferences like this. We're a very small team. So bear with us. But I think six months would probably be a fair estimate. Yeah. So you've got uh, Astro Pi and. Uh, weather station. Um, are you allowed to tell us what other magic projects <laughs> you have in the pipeline? Um, if I knew, I would probably, you know, I'll tell you. And so there are, there are a number of things going on. Um, so I mentioned, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm multitasking. I'm very sorry. I should have uh, just maybe not done this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nick, Nick's pressing me for, to give, some, give something away. No. Um, so things we're currently doing at the moment. So the, um, the picture, the space launch picture that I showed you earlier on, the balloon, we did last week. We are working with some teachers later this month to get them trained up on how to launch their own um, weather balloon launch with a Pi attached so that they can, um, so that they can take this, uh, the Raspberry Pi into space and, inter and, and capture data from up there. So we had this really successful launch this week. I'm running out of, uh, of space up here. Um, yeah. Sorry, I'm probably okay, I think. I've just got to try and get this wire to reach this laptop, and then I'm good. Um, so, yeah, we did this launch with, um, in, in, in Cambridge, we had, uh, we had a little test launch, and then later in the month, we've got four, uh, sorry, 24 teachers coming to visit us. There we are, good. Um, coming to visit us, and we're going to teach them how to launch their own uh, balloons. And at the moment... This is a bit of a challenge to you and something we're going to take, hopefully take to PyCon UK. This balloon launch is currently, the software that runs the tracker is all written in C. So when I sat down and tried to get my kids to do some reprogramming of it and, and manipulate how it's working, it's just like, well, I'm not, we're not going to touch that bit because that's C and I'm, you know, I can do some Python, but yeah, yeah, that's horrible. Um, so we just stuck to doing all the science and the math and the engineering and the prediction. And what would be awesome 
from a teaching point of view is if I could actually expose the kids to the code that's working behind there and have some top level libraries that just said, right, here's the basic, here's the functionality, here's the parameters you can change, here's ways you can manipulate it. So if you're interested in getting involved in that project, I know the guy who wrote the original software, it's mainly time for him, he's learned a bit of Python, but he just hasn't got the time to go and implement that. So um, if you're interested, see me afterwards and I'll, and I'll um, try and have a chat. So um, now, what we've got here, so if we just go in and open up a little terminal window, so this is just a, a Raspberry Pi, it took a few minutes to load up because it's using the B+, um, because um, we don't need the power of the Pi to, it's just sitting there logging, okay? And um, Dave went for some, who wrote this, went for some really super original naming. So it's just called, I think, sudo dot slash Dave. Obviously, I think. Um, so hopefully, we should, what we should get here is a lovely Pi game interface. Um, and we can see the local uh, current weather conditions. Now, I believe there's a setting which I may have had to disable, but we'll give it a go. So the idea here is we've got this um, going on. I think because it's data logging in the background. Yeah, hang on, I have to turn something off. Give me a second. So what I have to do is there's a cron job running in the background and I think I have to close that. Cron tab, I think it's minus R. And then let's try that again. Um, and even if I can't quite get the, the live data working, um, you know, you, you, you can kind of get the idea. What, what I, you know, the bit I would struggle with with taking this into the classroom is, okay, so that's not quite working there at the moment. I've, I've never written Pygame software, okay, or, or Pygame um, applications. And, and Dave threw this together in a few hours, but approaching that with kids, that would be quite a challenging thing. So what, you know, I would really like from, you know, if, if anyone's interested in helping out, is a nice sort of framework GUI where you've got the basic elements and the kids just can manipulate properties. They haven't got to start that GUI from, from scratch. And perhaps something that's implemented in Pygame Zero, which we heard about this morning, would be awesome. Um, I will just see if I can show you the one other bit that we've got working. So this has been um, sitting data logging and, um, and, and sort of creating a little database in the background. It's been running for about a day, so there's not much data there. But um, what we've got on there, if it's still running, we've got a, um, a little website that's doing some graphing. And I was recently, um, it, was, it was really interesting, I was recently looking back, I've, I've still got remote access to my one back at uh, school. And I recently logged into it um, to, hang on. Da, 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 da. I logged into it to have a look at what it was doing. And it was really interesting. Up until a few days ago, there was, about three o'clock, there was a noticeable dip in air quality. And it took me a little while. Every day, there was a noticeable dip. Apart from weekends, there was a noticeable dip. Around three o'clock, there was a dip in air quality. And I realized that it was because it was on my classroom wall directly next to the car park. And so at three o'clock, when a lot of teachers just were like, right, I'm off, got in their cars, all their exhaust fumes just kind of like, just like got caught by the air quality sensor. And every day, there was this spike in air quality um, going. So uh, just bear with me, I think it's demo. And then if it's still running in the background, we should get, yep, so we've got a little Raspberry Pi weather demo. Um, so I th think we should have, <coughs> brilliant. Um, we should have a lot of graphs there, um, which aren't working, but the idea is that we'll work through with kids and show them how to put um, graph data on there so they can, they can plot the, sort of the, their findings from the last few days. Okay, so it's a partially successful demo, at least it booted and showed on there. Um, yeah, so any, any other questions? Because I've got five minutes or so, yeah? Does, yeah. Hi, um, I, I was wondering about the, the screen planned monitoring project. I was reading a little bit about it and I, I don't think like setting up where I do some voluntary work, um, this, this weather station might be too complex, but the greenhouse looks good, but I think it's, there've been some projects in the UK testing it and then uh, can you share any time frame or it's too early or? With which project, sorry, the? I said the, the, the plant monitoring, so The plant monitoring thing is currently, um, it's a, a small scale project which is happening. So I'm not sure how many of those boards have we produced? It's, it's a small little sample for it. It's, so at the moment th those, those, those greenhouses are in an exhibit. So it's, it's part of a sort of an art, sorry? Yeah, so we've got about 100 that we've produced for this, this art exhibit project going on. 
and um, the creator of those is, is mainly looking at the moment at how um, she can engage uh, adults and children together on the same project. So um, the teachers, so the um, adults and children have come together um, to the workshop. They've learned how to use it. They've taken it home, and they're now working together on it. And then lessons learned from that that, that may, at some point down the line, uh, inform some um, some other schemes of work or that kind of thing. That's probably a little bit further down the line uh, at the moment. Um, yeah. Um, I, I think this uh, this uh, whatever station project uh, may be a little bit complex for children. But what uh, age do you think uh, a child could be uh, happily involved in this kind of uh, project? Okay, so the so you saw um, a minute ago I had the, the different schemes of work um, that we're sort of proposing. Um, the first scheme of work that I've written, I've used that with key stage three children. So in the UK, that is. Um, 11 to 14 years old, okay, and they've done some very basic Python. I mean, their Python programs consist of 12 lines of Python, because all they're doing is they're importing some stuff, they are setting up some pins, and they just sit there and count in a loop how many, how many events there are. And then they just, every, every few seconds, they just present what the current wind speed is. So um, that's certainly very accessible. The, um, the graphical user interface side of things, I think that's probably, we're, we're looking at upper secondary there, so 16 um, onwards. But we're also, we're, um, we've got um, another idea which we've proposed. Um, so there was a talk earlier on where we were talking about physical computing. It's in theory possible to interact with this weather station using other um, languages such as Scratch. So um, one idea that we've currently got is to develop maybe a way of um, displaying some of that weather data using Scratch. So for your young children, they could be reading some of that data and displaying it in a more graphical, kind of engaging um, way. Uh, and even you know, with really young children, they could just have a, you know, it is raining, therefore I'm going to have like a rain cloud up here. You, know, you could do some really simple stuff. Um, but also as well, once you've got all this data that's been collected, that might be the point at which the uh, primary schools can get involved because you've got this data. We can start talking about what is weather, how do we log it, what does it mean? How do we predict? And they can start using that 